God's way of communicating is extremely colorful. And I mean, my, a while ago, my son and I went to see a movie and it was supposedly 4D. OK, so you got these 3D glasses on and, you know, the chair is shaking around and it blows wind in your face and whatever. You know, all of these kind of virtual immersion realities that the world is kind of putting out there now. And, and as technologically impressive as they may be um, you know it's that there is a far greater more exciting realm that is not virtual it's it's more real than the nose on your face or anything that you can see hear touch feel taste here on the earth and God has called you into this wonderful adventure called prayer his realm is one of extreme wonder. And, you know, when he speaks, worlds are thrown into motion. You know, this is the same God who spoke and the earth and all that is is in it was flung into existence. Yeah, this is the God that you've been called to close fellowship with and to participate with in the place of prayer. And, you know, it's, it's, it really is a sad note when we see how a large swathes of the church have really been stripped of the imagination of the one who made them. You know, that, that, that we uh, shy away from engaging with God in the realm of our imagination, in the realm of visions and dreams and other uh, kind of, in some ways, inexplicable communicate, uh, communications that he may want to bring to us. We want to be able to quantify everything. We want to be able to have a reasonable understanding of how things work. But let me, let me remind you, God is not reasonable. He is a God of the impossible. He is a spirit he is not, he will not fit into your mold. And the, the scriptures teach us that we were made in his image, not the other way round. And how sad it is that for so many, all they have seen of Christianity is a God made over in the image of man. That is not the God that the Bible speaks about. And so God still shows up and still shows off in ways that are quite magnificent and very, very exciting and very interesting and very immersive and that engage us in our entire being. It's not just this kind of gravelly, grey world that sometimes religion can appear as. It is a full-fledged, technicolor you know, widescreen, 3D, 360, whatever, everything is in the house. Everything is on the table when we begin to really truly uh, engage with Yahweh, with Jesus, with the Holy Spirit. You know, the scriptures teach us that we are a spirit, that we live in a body. And we're used to our natural senses helping us navigate and compre comprehend the world around us. And that is exactly as it should be. But how much more we need to understand that just as the body has senses, yeah, so our spirit, the real you, has senses as well. Yeah, this God-shaped image bearing you is a spirit. And, you know, really, whereas we are an integrated being, okay, and, and in some ways to splice things up, to like lay ourselves out on the biology table and start cutting things open, trying to understand some, some of this, there's nothing wrong with that, but we need to be careful that we don't try and kind of take a, this inexplicable realm this third heaven reality and try and explain it in first heaven terms. You know, like seriously, it's just the language is not there to do so. But if we were, if we were pushed 
in the, to, to say, I would say that I am a spirit. I have a soul, a mind, will, and emotions, and I live in a body, They're like a temporary earth suit that allows me to operate in this natural realm. You know, so who you are really essentially is not a body. You are a spirit. Your spirit has senses just like the natural man. And we could go into numerous different scriptures, but you know, this, the Bible, for example, tells us that we can taste and see that the Lord is good. We can taste, we can see, we can hear his voice. You know, there are things that we can touch in the spirit world and things that touch us. And in that, visions and dreams are absolutely normal. They're, they are like expected and ordinary colors in the supernatural palette of communication that God uses when he wants to speak to us. Now, of course, they're spiritually discerned, but they're no less real than the senses of our natural man. They're, in fact, if we if we boil it down, they're more real. The original substance from which all that we see was made was first spirit, was first in the spirit realm. The spirit realm is the prime realm. It came first and all of this natural realm proceeded from it. And so prayer, I think, is the place of spiritual activation. It's the playground of the spiritual senses and in the arena of activity of, uh, uh, in the realm of the spirit, when we engage in spirit-led prayer, it awakens our senses to that realm and in that realm. I love what Paul prays in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 17 to 18. These are just such powerful prayers that, that are recorded that we can take to ourselves. He prayed that God would grant you a spirit of wisdom and revelation, of insight into the mysteries and secrets in the deep and intimate knowledge of God, by having the eyes of your heart, again, we see here that our spirit man has eyes, can see. In, in, the, in the realm that he is resident in, which is the spirit realm, that the eyes of your heart would be flooded with light so you can know and understand the hope to which he has called you and how rich is his glorious inheritance in the saints, his set-apart ones. We enter into a revelation of insight into the mysteries and the secrets of God and the deep and intimate knowledge of him by having the eyes of our heart, our spirit man, flooded with supernatural light. Visionary prayer and working with images and pictures and your imagination in prayer is so much a part of this rich delight of knowing God that really we should all be picking up this prayer of Paul and making it our request that God would open the eyes of our understanding. And while we're at it, let's ask him to activate every sense of our spirit man. And I'm sure that there are more than five. You know, in the natural, everything is less than. Everything is limited. Everything has its, has its limitation and its boundary. But in the spirit world, there are things that, you know, Paul talks about sounds and words that are unspeakable, colors that are indescribable, Things in that realm, in this God realm that we have been called to participate in and partake of are far beyond any of the wonder that we have experienced or can engage with in the natural. And believe me, man, the natural realm is pretty mind-blowing in itself. So how much more, how exciting, how incredible it is that we've also been given the opportunity to step beyond the veil into this invisible reality, but that through the Holy Ghost, through the operation of God in our lives, it is actually made visible to us. Father, I pray that you would open our spiritual eyes. 
Bring us into deep and intimate knowledge of your world and your ways and reveal to us, each and every person here today listening right now, you. I pray, God, that you would reveal to us the hope of our calling. There really is so much more for us to explore and to discover. There's so much more in this wonderful, endless pleasure of prayer for us to enjoy. Well, thanks for listening. Hopefully uh, it's been an encouragement to you today. If you want to connect any further, you can do so through my website at davidleemartin.com. Have a great day.